So hi there. For the, um, for the past 10 years, for almost every day, in one way or another, as part of my job, I get to talk about sex. The good, the bad, and the awkward. Lots and lots of awkward. Um, this happened somewhat accidentally. Like everyone, after finishing university, I decided to become a documentary filmmaker. I had an early 20s life crisis and um, got a cheap video camera and decided to move somewhere exotic and far away. So I went to Jerusalem. Having the camera on me let me be as nosy and inquisitive as I wanted to be with total strangers. So in Jerusalem, I found myself interviewing young people and steering the conversation towards sex. But in Jerusalem, people my age were avoiding sex altogether. They were not having it for religious reasons, cultural reasons, or spiritual reasons. So that was in direct conflict with what I learned growing up in the States, which is much of what you're seeing here. Um, my sex education came from MTV in the late 80s, early 90s. So, you know, you need to straddle a Jaguar, or um, be in a Motley Crue video and try and be a stripper, or, um, you know, have sex on promenade. So this is the kind of stuff I absorbed, and I also took the opportunity to seize the opportunity and learn on my own. Um, I was lucky growing up in suburban Pennsylvania. I took for granted that I could walk home safely from school, go to the store, go on a date, and be relatively unharmed. I took for granted that I was an independent person, that I was allowed to experiment with my sexuality, and that my choices would be respected. Um, that all changed when I was sexually assaulted. Um, this person was not a stranger. This is someone that I knew and thought I could trust. Uh, what happened to me could have happened anywhere. Um, a year, it took me a year to talk about it. I was so ashamed, but once I started talking about it, I couldn't stop. And talking about it became a vehicle out. And the camera allowed me to tell a bigger story. No. Did we skip a slide? Maybe we did. Anyway, so there's missing a slide, but um, I made a film about my experience, and the film is called The Line. And it looks at this idea of the line of consent, and not so much the line between yes, sex, or no, but something more nuanced and complicated. Where is the line? Who gets to decide it? How do we find it? Um, the film is personal, and it's personal to me, but it resonated around the world. So I showed the film in Taiwan, Liberia, Mexico, and on college campuses all across the country. Um, I asked one simple question of my audience, which was, where is your line? I opened that up and let people answer. So here someone says, wherever I decide it is, not you, not my parents, not my religion, not my culture. My line is being seen as a sexual being, not a sexual object. I don't know. As a male, I didn't know I was allowed to have one. Yeah, I get that a lot with the guys. Um, it changes. Please ask, please listen. And for the fast food connoisseur, in between McDonald's and Burger King, <laughs> you'll be having it your way, and I'll be loving it. So we collected thousands of these responses from students. And for many young men, this is the first time they had ever thought about it. They had thought about their own line, thought about their partner's line. Um, the more I started sharing my own story and opening up these questions to young people, the more young women especially started sharing their stories with me. Um, a young woman in Connecticut had a drug slipped into her drink. Um, she woke up in a strange house in a part of town that she wasn't familiar with, and she had been gang raped. Um, her friends were nowhere to be found. She had to walk by herself at dawn to a gas station to figure out how to get home. Another young woman, it was, the party was winding down. It was late at night, and she had to make a hard decision. Does she spend the night at the party? Does she walk home by herself at 3 in the morning? Or does she let someone she doesn't really know take her home? She chose that option, and he assaulted her. Another young woman in Wisconsin wondered if it was normal that her boyfriend was checking her phone all the time and wanted her email password. And she didn't know if she could call it rape if it was her boyfriend who was forcing her. Oh, so I think this is a different presentation. I was going to show you a statistics slide, and the statistic is pretty 
terrible. Um, in the United States, one in four college women will be the victim of sexual assault before they graduate college. And as we talked about earlier, rape is a very underreported crime, so likely the number is much higher. It's the statistic one in four that led the White House to put out a challenge called the Apps Against Abuse Technology Challenge. They wanted everyday citizens and engineers to get together and come up with a mobile device that could prevent violence with young people. It was their stories and the scope of the problem that inspired us to build Circle of Six. Here's how it works. Very simple GPS technology, group SMS, and really the understanding that young people use their friends and a peer network to be accountable to each other. So we built this tool specifically for college students in the States, but then something incredible happened. Um, last week, actually, I got an email from a father in London saying he downloaded it for his daughter. Um, a Native American teacher tells young women about it on her reservation. A woman wrote me in Korea and said, if I'd had this app as a teenager, my life would have been a whole lot better. So as, as was said before, um, we are now in 28 countries around the world um, with over 75,000 users. And people write us every day and tell us the different ways they're using it and how they discovered it. And it's really exceeded beyond our expectations. Um, I'm sure many of you know in December, a 23-year-old woman in New Delhi on her way home from uh, a movie, was gang raped and brutally murdered. Um, we saw downloads of Circle of Six rise dramatically after that incident, and something about that story felt so familiar. She's a young woman living in an urban center, independent but vulnerable at the same time. Um, we're a really small team, it's three of us, but we decided to act quickly, and we translated the app, we got partners on the ground with the United Nations, and we customized a version specifically for New Delhi. Um, so two months ago, we released Circle of Six in Hindi for users in New Delhi, and now New Delhi is the top, is the number two community using our app. So we're really, as much as the tool is important, it's also amazing to be meeting these people, like this young man who says, I'm going to make Delhi the safe capital, not the rape capital of India, and for a young woman who says, I pledge to take up space and laugh out loud and live without fear. Um, so what this experience has taught me and my own experience is that ending sexual violence takes a lot of different things. Um, I envision a world where sexual pleasure and sexual safety go hand in hand, where we all feel confident saying what we do and we don't want, where our voices are heard and our choices are respected, and the technology we all have allows us to be accountable to each other, creating circles of, excuse me, circles of care and working to make those bigger then we can create a world without sexual violence. Thank you. <laughs>